Today we're going to mix and apply some of the polyspec uh, ceramic materials. We actually have a beaded material, the Resoc 181, which is a no black material, 4 to 1 beaded ceramic for a high wear and abrasion. We've got the CC4000, which is a liquid brushable ceramic, 80% ceramic. And we also have the CT3000, which is a putty version of this product. So we're going to mix all three of them, talk about, a, about them a little bit, and actually put them on a piece of metal where you can see Okay, first we're going to mix the CC4000. We're going to start out, uh, we're going to take the hardener. You have to be careful when you mix this, the hardener is clear. We like to have different contrasting colors when we can, so that you can tell when they're mixed properly. On this particular one, it's, that's not possible. We've actually got a clear amber color hardener. We have a blue resin. That's going to be our final color. On this particular product, uh, you can back batch mix it. We prefer you don't. We like to mix all the hardener with all the resin. It's a 3.4 to 1 mix. Uh, it's hard to get it just right by volume. And you're always better off just pouring all of the hardener into all of the resin. Taking all the mixer. We cut a little bit of that so you didn't stand there and watch me mix for three minutes, but we basically mix this for three minutes. You want to be very careful because, again, as I mentioned, the hardener is clear. You can't see any streaks or swirling if it's not mixed properly. So we all mixed it uh, for three minutes. I'm going to set this right here. Now we're ready to go. This particular product, it actually comes with a brush, has everything you need. You can literally pour it. You can roll it. Uh, you can thin this and spray it. We're just going to mix a little bit of it up here. Brush apply it. And this is normally used on pumps, on impellers, on heat exchangers, anywhere you need a really nice smooth finish. The advantage of this product, one, it has very good chemical resistance has good abrasion resistance, and two, you can. a lot of people think of these products as a maintenance repair for something that's actually worn out. What a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people now are taking this product and putting it on a, on a brand new piece of equipment. Let's say you had a brand new pump and it's made out of cast. Well, that cast is going to wear out pretty quickly. It doesn't have good chemical resistance. You can take a brand new pump for a fraction of the price of the pump. You can actually prep and apply some of the CC4000 now you've got a ceramic line pump, which is going to perform much better. It also helps efficiency. If you take a pump that's pitted, worn, and now you make it smooth, it's actually going to increase the efficiency and make it work better. It comes in a uh, nice light blue color. It also comes in a plum red color. You can use one or the other. A lot of times we actually like to use both. You can use the contrasting colors actually as a wear guide. Let's say on this particular piece of metal, we put down 20 mil of blue. We might put down later 20 mil of red another 20 mil of blue. Well, if you come back later and inspect it and you see red, you actually know your 60 mil coating is now 40. If you see blue through the red, you know you're down to 20. So really, it does that. Also, it helps you know where you've been. It's like painting uh, the wall on the back deck. If you put two or three coats of beige, you don't know where you've been the first time and the second. Here, this actually makes sure that you don't have any holidays. Make sure that you get all the areas covered. You can certainly spark test, but this will, if you do multiple colors and do multiple coats, you're not going to have any problems with holidays. See how easily this works. And there you have it. Okay, we're going to talk about the uh, CT3000. This is an 80% ceramic product. Uh, excellent product, easy to work with. Uh, the best way to describe it, it works and smooths out about like peanut butter. So we have our resin, have our hardener. This particular product is a 2.9 to 1 mix ratio by volume. It's hard to get it just right and that is critical. We really recommend that everyone mix the entire contents of the resin and the hardener. So we're going to go ahead and Take the uh, hardener out, and the nice thing about this, this is uh, we're going to have two contrasting colors. We try to do that anytime we can. There are certain times, like on the CC4000, where you're going to have one that's clear and one that's dark. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. But this particular one, going to make it real nice and easy for you. Okay. Now 
we're going to take our resin. See how thick this is? And this is so that it will hold on the vertical surface. You can actually put this on up to about a half inch thick. It's 100% solid, so you don't have to worry about solving entrapment if you want to go thicker. You literally, it depends on uh, if you're putting it on a vertical surface. Half inch is about maximum, otherwise you can just about put it as thick as you want to. how easy this is to work in the smooth. We're literally going to take our harder and we're going to put it over here and we're just going to fold it into the uh, resin. And now we're just going to work it and mix it. What you'll notice here is we start to mix it see streaks and swirls. Anytime you see that, you know the material is not mixed thoroughly. It's not going to harden in those areas. You want to be very careful to get mixed all the way. Alright, now it's starting to get the color that it should. Again, a lot of this is not mixed. It would harden in some areas. It wouldn't in the others. This product is uh, used all over the industry. It bonds great to metal. It's used for pump repair, heat exchangers, all types of different things where you need a smooth ceramic finish. Excellent wear and abrasion resistance, good chemical resistance. It actually bonds well to rubber. This particular product has been used in the power industry and FGD type applications where it actually uh, bonding holes in areas in rubber lines. It does a great job. Okay. See, we're almost getting there. Still see some, some little areas here that we have un unmixed material. What's your working time? Working time on this particular product is about is about 45 minutes also. And again, this uh, this depends on your uh, the amount that you mix, on the temperature. So you want to make sure that you uh, don't mix up more than you need. If you mix up a large mass, it's going to set up faster. If it's hot, it's going to set up faster. So you want to, you know, if it's a real hot climate, you want to mix up smaller amounts. You want to cool the material down. These products work like motor oil. If you get them cold, you're going to have more working time, but it's also going to thicken. And again, if it's real cold, you can heat it up. Now it's going to set up faster, it's going to be thinner. Okay, now we have our uh, material thoroughly mixed. We're going to take a little scoop here. We're going to put it on our metal that's been cleaned and sandblasted. You see how nicely this works and smooths. putting it on here about a, about a half inch thick. You can put it on thicker if you'd like, uh, if you're not going on a vertical surface. And again, you see how, how beautifully this material works. Again, I describe it about like peanut butter. It just really is easy to work and smooth. And you take a guy who's an average guy with a trowel like me and it can really make you look good with this stuff. And there we have it, CT3000. Okay, here we have you know, overhead surface, vertical surface. Just great product, hangs well, stays where you put it. Uh, does a fantastic job for repairing where you need a good, strong ceramic coating.
on this particular material, uh, it's very important to get it nice and smooth. You don't want to have, let's say you're doing a pump or you're doing an area where there's wear and abrasion, you don't want to have an area that's high that sticks up that can actually uh, cause whatever aggregates going through to uh, start to attack. So you can work it pretty smooth with your trial. One of the other things you can do, you can actually take hand soap or gojo and you can actually put this on top of the material once it starts to cure and you can smooth it out. And you want to be careful. You don't want to do that if you're going to put any other top coating on it. Because once you do that, you've contaminated your surface and it's no longer going to accept another coating. What you would do if you thought you might want to put another coating on this, you can take a sheet of polyethylene, which has a slick petroleum base. You can literally lay the polyethylene on top of the coating, rub it smooth, and then wait for it to cure. And you can peel it right off and it'll be smooth as glass. Okay, we're going to talk about the uh, Polyspec ResRock 181, a really unique beaded wearing compound. What makes this product unique is that it actually has a Novolac binder system. Most uh, beaded materials have a high ceramic content, usually about 68% ceramic. That's the maximum amount of beads you can put in and still hold, have enough binder to hold it together. What makes this product unique, instead of an epoxy, it actually uses a Novolac, which is a more tightly, densely interlinked uh, binder system. And what that does, it, it makes it tougher, gives you better chemical resistance. A lot of these products are used, let's say, in a power plant for a coal application. When you get wet coal, what do you have? You have sulfuric acid. Now you've got a binder system that's going to actually hold that material together and it's going to perform that. Here's the kind of kit that it normally comes in. Uh, we're going to actually mix a small one. Normally you would mix this up, you would open it up, you would use a power mixer to mix it. We're just going to mix a small container here just to give you an idea. Again, one of the unique things about this product You'll see. One thing I like about it, the actual hardener is red, and, and there also are not any beads in it. So that normally makes it a little bit easier to mix. So we're going to take our our resin, scoop it out. You can see how nice and thick this is. And that's what you want because a lot of times you're troweling and mixing these products overhead or on a, on a vertical surface. Mix it here. I'm going to use the same paddle here to get this out. Normally, as a no no, you wouldn't want to contaminate, but we're going to use all of A and all of B, so now this is not going to hurt. If you're going to batch it out, which we don't recommend, then you want to make sure you use separate paddles to get it out so you don't contaminate your product. Again, notice the hardener system, how nice and smooth it is. It also doesn't have the beads in it. One of the advantages of this, when you take it and you mix it, a lot easier to actually mix into the resin. You can actually use your regular trowel, you can use whatever you want to use to mix it. Okay, you can see right here it's partially mixed. You see some red, some gray. You want to mix it till you get everything thoroughly mixed. Again, it's a four to one mix ratio should you choose to batch it. For a small repair. Okay, now we're getting pretty close. This over here. Again, this product is much easier when you actually power mix it. One of the uh, disadvantages of power mixing is that it creates heat, it sets up a little faster but it does mix it better, it's easier to do if you mix in large quantities. Okay, now you see mixed material. What we're going to do, we're going to put it on this metal that's actually been blasted clean. We're going to put it on our prep metal. You notice right here, I scraped it up, we have a little bit of unmixed material. Just turn around and just mix it a little bit more on there. You want to make sure you have everything thoroughly mixed. You can also use some of our products like our CC4000, which is a uh, ceramic liquid. You can actually prime this surface before you put the uh, 181 on. You don't have to, but you 100% wet out the surface. 
Now we're going to turn around and smooth some of our material out. One of the things we like to do with this material, anytime you're putting it in, uh, say, a pipe elbow, a coal elbow, anywhere you have heavy wear and abrasion, one of the problems you can have is thermal cycling, and also you can have impact. One of the ways to uh, avoid that is one, to prime it. Two, a lot of times we use expanded metal. Normally this expanded metal would already be applied to the metal, it would be tacked in. We're just gonna lay a little bit on here just to give you an idea of how this would work. Now we're going right back up. Now had that expanded metal actually been tack welded in to start with, now you would have a mechanical bond, you'd also have an adhesive bond. If it were to say thermal cycle enough to partially delaminate the material, it's not going anywhere because you have your expanded metal welded in there. Again, you see how nice and neatly this material works. You can get it really good and smooth. It's just a dream to work with compared to most materials. Give you an idea of what we can do here. Vertical, overhead. This material stays where you put it. You got about 45 minute working time. And it's going to start to harden, set up. A little bit before it starts to harden or set up, you can actually take a little bit of hand soap, a little bit of gojo. You can rub it, you can smooth it. Again, you never want to do that unless that's your final coat because what you're putting on there will actually contaminate the surface. But the advantages you have, if you leave some little rough areas, your aggregate's gonna attack that area. If you have a little area where it's low, it's gonna attack that area. So you want it as nice and uniform and smooth as you can get it. And you won't find a product that works as smooth as a whole lot easier than this.